Hey guys, welcome back to another Underground Virtuosos video. My name is Paul. I'm a violin viola teacher located here in San Diego, California. So today we're going to be talking about how to play more comfortably at the Frog. So at the Frog, um, we can play a lot of different things um, like louder dynamics. Um, if we're trying to sustain a long bow, we start the Frog. If we're trying to do spiccato, staccato, it would be in the lower half, sometimes near the Frog. And um, when I was a student, uh, you know, f playing on the frog definitely was not a comfortable um, place. And physically, it wasn't comfortable. And there's also that, um, that little bit part of me that feels like I don't want to scratch. And so every time I'm the frog, it makes it even more uncomfortable because I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't scratch or make a bad sound. And nowadays, when I teach, um, you know, at schools and watch students play, a lot of them play near the middle to the tip area. No matter what they were playing, they would always stay from middle to the tip. And this is um, something that I think many students struggle with until you discover how to be more comfortable and how to utilize the frog a little bit better. So let's get into it. If you have your instrument, violin, viola, you want to try it with me, go and take it out. So the first thing we talk about is uh, how to be more relax how to not feel comf uh, how to f not feel uncomfortable near the frog okay so the first thing you're going to make sure you're doing is your arm should feel uh, in a way almost almost lazy feeling okay not like completely lazy where you like this but just like not not in a way where you're up and about you know just nice and relaxed okay now you're going to get your bow set out the frog now for me the frog is the index finger Okay, you should have like an inch or so from the middle part of your uh, part of your frog to the um, index finger, and that should be your frog area right there. Okay, so fingers nice and relaxed, nice and round here, all of them. And the most important key ingredient for today's exercises is the thumb. Do not squeeze the thumb. Very important. Okay, now. The next thing I'm going to ask you to do is scratch. You might wonder why, and I'll tell you that in a second. Sorry in advance for anybody trying this and it doesn't sound good and, and anybody, family members listening to it at home or something, or neighbors. All right, but you're going to scratch on purpose. Here we go. Okay, so I played here near the frog, three inches or so, and I scratched. Now, when I scratched, I did not squeeze my thumb. So if you feel like you were squeezing your thumb, you should try one more time and try not to squeeze your thumb and see if you can still scratch. Sometimes students will first start without, able, uh, without being able to scratch because uh, they're used to squeezing near the frog area. Okay, but what you have to understand is that it's the arm weight that you have to apply on in order to make a scratchy sound. here in the arm area nice and sitting on the string nice and relaxed even the thumb especially the thumb and your fingers here okay all right so why do we want to scratch those of you wondering um the idea is that if you start like your if you start scratching which means you're doing too much right um you can shave it down and you will easily find your maximum volume maximum like what you can do with your bow but if you start too small and then you have to find your way up it's going to take a lot longer and it's going to be more difficult for you to actually know where your maximum limit is so let me tell you what uh, let me show you not tell you uh, what maximum is and how to find it so we're going to do it one more time okay and this time we're going to start uh, scratching in the same place but we're going to play the more we play we're going to use more and more bow. We're always going to come back to the frog and we're never going to squeeze the thumb, but we're going to use more and more bow until you're kind of in the upper half area, staying at the same tempo. So it kind of goes like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. Okay, so let's do it together. The first few notes should still sound scratchy though. Relax your thumb. Here we go. One. Two, ready, go. Okay, so 
if you were able to start scratchy and then you were able to just use more and more bow and start to sound really good, start to sound like you can actually use it in your own music, then you're on the right track. Those of you that didn't start scratching right away, try again, relax, and really sink in um, without putting pressure on, okay? Um, now, so that's how to find, in a way, maximum, uh, where you can uh, utilize a little bit more bow in order to make up for how much arm weight there is, all right? But now you might be asking, well, Paul, what if I'm trying to play softer dynamic near the frog? Well, all you have to do is take weight off, and we have an exercise for that. So you're going to play from the frog to the middle, okay? It shouldn't sound terrible. Um, definitely not scratchy because it's going to be enough bow, okay? But over time, you're going to lighten up the weight until you reach a piano dynamic. So you're going to start forte, very big sound from frog to middle. And over time, you're going to stay the same amount of bow, same speed too. But you're just going to lighten up the feeling in your hand without squeezing your thumb, without raising your shoulder or your arm here. Just lighten up. It's a feeling that you need to... Um, understand in your hand here. Okay, let's do it together. Okay, so if you're able to go from forte to piano, maintaining the same amount of bow, maintaining the same um, speed and, and tempo, and have a nice gradual decrescendo down, um, near the frog, then you most likely are on the right track for that as well. Also, um, do not squeeze uh, your thumb. If you catch yourself squeezing or feeling like you're really trying to take your bow off the string and start to play kind of like this, and start to feel very unsettled, then you're not doing it correctly. Make sure you're not squeezing, make sure you're not raising anything, just a lighter feeling in your hand here. Okay? All right, so. You can go ahead and try this and put it in your own music. You know, if you have some passage that you can use to play near the frog area for big sounds, smaller sound, di different dynamics, um, different tempos, different rhythms, things like that, and you're playing near the frog area, give it a try. Really encourage you to go and give it a try because you might find it to be a lot easier and not so uncomfortable anymore. Okay, so with that, um, Thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you um, have any suggestions, questions, um, leave it down in the comments. Um, and also hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.